Hey YouTuber, what's up? Today we're going to talk about how to get these crystal effects using a homemade solution that we can make ourselves. We're going to go over how to make it, how to apply it, and what we need to do with it. Anyway, this is what it looks like with a couple of coats of clear. I will wet sand that and lay another coat later. Anyway guys, I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry and our channel is all about helping you learn to grow and succeed as an airbrush artist giving you the tools tips and techniques that you need if that sounds like something you're interested in you can get started by hitting the subscribe button down below but let's get on to the tutorial all right guys first thing i did on this was i took some autoborn silver sealer and i based a aluminum composite panel in autoborn silver sealer then i got out my bigger gun and i used some Auto air medium aluminum base and then I laid out some medium aluminum base on here no you do not have to use silver and aluminum you could use a white base you could use uh, you know a pink base you could use a red base anything that'll contrast the color um, just so you know that is what a properly oriented flake or pearl pattern should look like guys you don't want streaky stuff on this in this particular case i could have got by without it but you need to learn how to lay that stuff out then i just let it cure for a little bit and then i used a spray can clear coat because what i had laying around and it was handy then you take some plain old water mix up this stuff right here smurea Half of the mix, which you want to use a one-to-one -one volume, half of your mix goes in there. The water will turn very, very cold. There's a reaction when the urea hits the water. So stir that until all that dissolves up and it doesn't dissolve anymore. And then you'll notice that your water is going to be cold. After that, you're going to need to put it on a stove or something and heat it up. I would imagine you could use a microwave. But you don't want it to get very hot. You want it to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 105. If you overheat it too much, boil it, you will boil the urea out of the water. So you can notice I put my hand in that pot. So it's not a lot of heat at all. Um, not sure what the temp for 100 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. That's 20 something degrees. I don't remember exactly for all you non-American people out there. Then you dump the other, other half of urea, urea in there and you're good to go. Then put that in your mix, put a couple of drops of plain old dish soap in there and give that a little stir. Once you do that, you are going to put it in a bottle of some sort. I like to use little spray bottles like this. Uh, my wife works at a pharmacy, so she brings me home these all the time whenever I want to. So I got an unlimited supply of spray bottles. You could convert this and put it in your spray gun. It sprays beautifully out of a spray gun. Where do you find urea? You can find urea. You're just going to have to do a Google search on it for your local market. Um, it is a nitrogen fer fertilizer is what it is. Um, so you can find it quite often around. I think when I bought that little bag... Um, you know, I picked it up at an art store, so it's actually been used in art for a long time. So before I went to my panel, I did a little test run and I sprayed this on a, my patio door and let it set up on the patio door. Um, remember guys with this stuff, it is dependent on your, what your humidity levels are, temperatures and all that. So your crystal effects are affected by temperature, humidity. That's why you can never exactly duplicate the exact same crystal structure twice. All right, now that our little pearls are protected, now we're gonna sand, 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 so that we got a little something to grip to. It also helps the way to control the direction of the crystalline structures. And then we're going to tape off anything that we do not want to get the crystal effects on. So that's secondary. We're going to spray our solution and wet the entire panel down completely. So now it's time. Eat a little pizza. Drink you some coffee, tea, what have you. 
and wait on the old clock here for a few minutes. Wash your hands. Seriously, I shouldn't have to tell you that. That's a little bitty time lapse of what happened while we were off eating our pizza. So that's how the crystalline structure is forming. And after the crystal structure is formed, it should look something like this. After that, you're going to take a little bit of, so we're going to go get some spray paint and or we're going to get some paint or a contrasting color and spray it over the crystal effects. Uh, be gentle with this. If you got in there like a 30 PSI right up on it, you'd probably blow a bunch of that urea off and flake it. After you let that set up for a little bit, go over to your kitchen sink, get you a soft cloth or a preferably um, wet sand with a scotch Bright pad. Bill Kennedy claimed that wet sanding in the kitchen sink is a good idea. Test results confirmed. This is a lie. Guys, then I cut myself a spade out of a piece of sheet of paper and I just outlined that with some black. Um, guys, I'm going to have a question, uh, you know, frequent questions or the questions that I expect to have uh, in the later parts of this video. Also, you'll see that damage on the left-hand side, and I'll explain exactly what happened in here. So I took my black, and I just kind of, like, you know, ran around with my texture stencil and added a little bit of texture to that little border that I had taped off. Um, you know, I pointed this out. I'll point this out later, but, uh, you know, the tape was not the right tape. So once I got done, you know, blackening in a little bit there, I got me some Tequila Yellow Candy 2.0, mixed it up, sprayed in my Tequila Yellow in the middle, and then I grabbed me some Grabber Orange and sprayed around the outer edge and wish I had some Blood Red. I do not know how I ran out of Blood Red because I always keep that stuff in stock. But I did not have any of that uh, Blood Red here, so that color was out of the question. After that, I dried it off there, and what I'm going to do is let this panel sit for a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like now. It's going to get a couple of coats of clear. I'm sure you've got questions, so we got answers. One, you can add alcohol to your solution, about 5%, and it will dry and cure faster. It will also make the crystals tighter weave than if you leave it air dry or if you don't add any alcohol solution to it. Two, do you have to wait? No. If you air dry, which is what I did here, I took a fan and blew on half of this panel, which is why these crystals are of tighter structure than the crystals up here. Am I out of the doghouse? Not yet. Can you go light color on top of your dark color instead? Yes, you can do that. It is a slightly different look. I'll make some panels up in the next couple weeks uh, showing different styles and effects that we can make with this same with different colors. It was brought up, could you spray your flake or flake or your pearls as your light color on top of your dark color? No, because you have to sand the urea mix off and anything you do to unprotected pearls or flakes are going to damage those pearls and flakes. Uh, mistakes I made. Right here, two mistakes, two major mistakes I made. One is I only had some regular masking tape and keen viewers may have seen on the video where the urea was up behind the masking tape because it was a paper tape. That would not have happened had I used a tape that's designed to block water, uh, an automotive tape that's designed to block the seepage of water and moisture through. That wouldn't happen. When I peeled, I started to peel this tape off right here before I sanded my mix. And what that did was pulled a section of that paint off because the paint layer is laying on top of the urea mix and when you it's all in a solid sheet so when you start pulling at the tapes in there so i peeled some out next question can you do repairs yes you could come in here had i wanted to i just figured i would shadow this in and it wouldn't be too noticeable and it'd be okay for a test panel um, i could have come in here after this happened added some mix 
lightly dusted over some paint. What's the best paint to lay over your urea, urea mix? Um, two options there. One, a really nice option, it'll give you less of a paint edge, is if you use Intercoat Clear and a dark candy as your dark color, that um, that's capable. But if you want that really dark black mix, you need to get some Euro urethane black and spray it over there. No. You cannot have my baby. Do you have to use solvent-based paints? On top of the urea mix, you have to use a solvent base because the urea dissolves in water. If you sprayed water-based paint directly on top of the urea mix, you would, of course, dissolve all that crystal effect solution right there and it would destroy your effect. So that layer has to be a solvent-based paint. Aside from that, everything else could be water-based. As a matter of fact, this is a, I used a spray can clear coat, obviously you saw that, over the top of my uh, Auto Air Silver Mix, but I could have used 4030. Um, I could have used, you know, um, any kind of inner coat over that. Inner coat would have been my preferred way, but I didn't have any inner coat here. What is the ratio again? Okay, the ratio. Let's say, for instance, I was going to fill this cup up with water. I would take the same size cup and fill it with my urea. That would be a one-to-one -one mix by volume. When you dissolve it, it won't be twice as big, but for instance, it's just gonna increase the volume of the water a little bit. But when it's dry urea, dry urea, I put one-to-one -one mix. And then, as I showed earlier in the video, mix half in your warm water, stir that up, and it's gonna get real cold. Warm that water back up, dump your other half in, stir that up. Does it have to be the pellet style urea? No, if you can get the flakes, then you can use the flakes. The flakes are gonna be denser than the pellets in volume, so, if you get the flakes instead of the pellets, reduce the amount of urea by volume in half. Um, and the reason why is there's less airspace between the flakes than there is in the pellets. I'm sure you guys have seen this. You should have paid attention in, in science class. Okay, guys, we appreciate you stopping by and checking out our channel. Like, as always, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that share button, help out, get that channel broadcasted out there for me, would you? And as always, if you really like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, you know that thumb, you can, you can hit that down thumb. That'll work just okay too. But anyway, we appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye.